Vivi will still be the next and final member to join the Straw Hats and she will join in Elbaf. Now that Yamato didn't join for sure, I'm even more confident about this theory because in my opinion, it always just made too much sense to not be true. In this video that I dropped 4 months ago, I already predicted many things that would happen like King Cobra being the death at the Reverie, Sabo not being captured by the world government and actually escaping, Vivi going missing and no one knowing what actually happened to her, that Sabo will be accused of a murder and to add to the list, I also predicted that Yamato wouldn't join the Straw Hats. Now I personally have nothing against Yamato and I actually really love her as a character. However, from a story standpoint, I never understood why people thought she would join. I always said it makes more sense if she doesn't join Luffy after Wano for many reasons and it seemed that Oda thought the same thing. In this video, I'll get into all the reasons why it makes more sense if Vivi joins instead of Yama bro. But before that, make sure you like the video, subscribe subscribe to the channel and even hit that bell icon if you want to be notified when the next video drops. Now with all that being said, let's get into it. Yamato is a strong, powerful, fun, useful, and big boobed character. I truly do love her character, especially after she pulled up on Kaido and fought him at the time that Luffy fell from Onigashima. Even with all that though, I never understood why people said she would join the Straw Hats. From a story perspective, doesn't it make a lot more sense that she actually stays back in Wano because she's supposed to help Momo? The one thing everyone knows Yamato for is that she claims she is Odin, whether you think it's funny or annoying, as it seems some people really don't like her, you have to admit that if she is literally Odin, doesn't it make sense that Odin would help raise his son into becoming a great shogun? As the father of Momo, Odin needs to help him grow up mentally because even though he looks 25, he still has the experience and thought process of a 10 year old. We saw how Yamato practically raised Momo into not being scary during the raid, even when he was in his adult form, which shows that even though he grew up physically, he still needs his father to guide him mentally. Many people say that that the fact that Yamato's Odin actually was the reason that she should have left with the Straw Hats and be there when Luffy becomes the next Pirate King, but that never made much sense to me because the Straw Hats don't need Yamato. In case you forgot, Odin wasn't even technically a real Roger Pirate because he was actually a commander for Whitebeard. Literally the only reason he even joined the Roger crew was because they needed him to read the Poneglyphs and find the One Piece. The Straw Hats already have Nico Robin for that, so they really don't need Odin or Yamato on their crew. If Yamato is to carry on the will of Odin and do what he did, then I think it'd actually make more sense if she sailed out to sea with someone other than Luffy, just like how Odin did with Whitebeard and not Roger. Now the third reason for it making more sense if Yamato stayed back in Wano is because of her devil fruit. She literally has the devil fruit which is supposed to be the guardian of Wano which allows me to think that at this point she is the guardian of Wano and that that might be her ultimate destiny. Yamato is currently the strongest fighter or warrior in Wano and she needs to stay back as a force of protection because I can definitely tell you that if someone strong comes in, Momo, Kinemon, and the rest of the scabbards won't be able to defend them off. Yamato is honestly the strongest back at Wano and her staying back is very important for the country as a whole. So now that you understand why I think it's better for Yamato to not join the Straw Hats, now let me explain why I think Vivi will join and not only that but also in the Elbaf arc. At the end of Alabasta, it really seemed that Oda tried to practically tell us that Vivi will rejoin and be a straw hat again someday. It's been about 20 years since then so the question should be if she were to join when and how will she even get to the straw hats? Well I stated in my reverie theory that I believe Kuma will send Vivi off to Elbaf using his devil fruit powers. This doesn't seem as likely anymore though since it seems that Sabo completely split up from the revolutionaries before he did what he did. Now that we actually know that whatever happened with Sabo and King Cobra happened after he departed with the revolutionaries it seems even more likely that he helped Vivi. If Sabo found out that King Cobra was looking into the Void Century and found out that the Gorsei were commanded to go after Vivi, he may have helped her escape which would explain why she went missing. It would also make sense why Sabo is still by himself and away from the revolutionaries. He may have to do it for Vivi's sake since he may want her to be erased from history. I feel like if he was by himself, he wouldn't have to hide away from anyone and would have just gone straight back to the base to tell Dragon what really happened. Sabo 
Sabo is a guy that can definitely take care of himself out in the seas. I mean, he's even referred to as the Flame Emperor, so I don't see why an emperor would hide away from the public unless they were trying to help someone else. Also, I wonder if Bonnie was involved with any of this too. If she helped the revolutionaries with Bart, she may have also helped them with Vivi to repay them for helping her old friend. Vivi was known as instantly going missing from the reverie, which seems very strange. I don't see how Sabo could take her and not be seen by anyone. Maybe Bonnie used her devil fruit powers to change Vivi's age, which could explain how she went missing and wasn't found. There seems to be some sort of trend with Supernos being in each saga since we got Lon Punk Hazard and Dress Rosa, Beige and Whole Cake, and lastly, Kid, Killer, Drake, Apu, and Hawkins in Wano. With this trend, maybe we'll see Bonnie in the next arc. Also, I wonder if her powers could heal Kuma since maybe making him younger could make him human again. I don't know, maybe none of this happened with her at the Reverie, but even then, I still think she did something to help Sabo and Kuma. Anyways, going back to Vivi, this theory gets more and more massive with other people from Alabasta, like Koza, and let me tell you why. If Vivi escaped with Sabo, you may wonder, well, wouldn't she tell him to take her back to Alabasta to help her country, or why the heck would she allow herself to go to Elbaf? I believe she won't be needing to go back to Alabasta, because I think Koza may have ties to the Revolutionary Army, and will also become the next leader of Alabasta. With him being the next leader or king, Vivi won't have to do it herself and can actually freely join the Straw Hats. There's a lot of reasons that I think Koza will be the king of Alabasta and be alliance with the revolutionaries, and some of those reasons come from the fact that Vivi calls him leader, which may foreshadow him being the leader of Alabasta, Koza originally leading an army of revolutionaries, his close connection with King Cobra, and weirdly enough, these goggles that he wears. I've already made a 30 minute video discussing this topic, so go check that video also if you want to see the whole picture with Alabasta and the revolutionary's true purpose. Anyways, the recent chapter does seem to kind of prove that Alabasta may have discussed with the revolutionaries since we see Dragon look very displeased and upset with what the rumors are saying about Sabo. He may have liked King Cobra personally or may have just been mad that it makes the revolutionaries look like murderers, but whatever the case may be, I think he didn't want King Cobra to die specifically. So going back to Vivi, basically, if she can't go back home and if it is left in good hands where she doesn't have to go back. The other place she calls home is on the Sunny with the Straw Hats. That is honestly the only place in the world that she is both safe and welcomed with open arms. I guess another place could be with the revolutionaries themselves, but I think she'd much rather join with Luffy than them. Sabo may help Vivi to go back with the Straw Hats as her number one request to him may be to find Luffy. Another safe place that would work, at least momentarily, would be Elbaf. This is a very safe place for her to stay since the world government won't look for her there. It's also safe because in case you forgot, she became friends with the Elbaf captains and legendary warriors, Dory and Bragi. In my opinion, having Little Garden a part of the Alabasta saga and having Vivi meet the Elbaf giants is the ultimate Oda move as it may in fact be useful for when the Elbaf arc actually comes into place. I don't quite see why else Oda would have Vivi meet the Elbafs and have Little Garden a part of the Alabasta saga unless he was gonna make it where Vivi is at least with the Straw Hats once again by the time they get to Elbaf. Another thing that makes sense to me with Vivi finally joining in the last saga is that she hopped on the Going Merry with the Straw Hats as they headed over to Whiskey Peak. With this, she was with the crew from the very beginning of their Grand Line One Piece seeking journey, so I think it would be great writing if she rejoins only during the very last voyage or journey that the Straw Hats take. That's probably why Oda didn't have her meet back up with the Straw Hats even once throughout the story. Also, Oda may have foreshadowed Vivi being the 10th Straw Hat when he symbolized her farewell with the Straw Hat with the X on their arms. In case you don't know, X is the Roman numeral for 10. As she departed with them, she asks, if they ever meet again, will they call her their crewmate? And then they raise the number 10 signifying that when they do run into each other again, she will be the 10 Straw Hat. Oda is known for this kind of foreshadowing, so I'm not going to be surprised if this ends up becoming true. Something to think about with Vivi rejoining is the fact if she's gotten any stronger and also what her role will be on the crew. I was thinking her role could be something politically, but I feel like the Straw Hats don't really need that since they've already got kingdoms on their side everywhere they go. Also, I feel like if she's not going to have a very important role as a Straw Hat, she'd either need to have gotten stronger with Hockey or a Devil Fruit. Without this, I just don't quite see how she's keeping up with the rest of the crew when they're going against guys like Shanks and Blackbeard. Do you guys think she could potentially get something like a Rain Fruit since one of the biggest themes throughout Alabasta was the terrible drought and how it affected them politically. Whatever Vivi obtained, she's 
gonna at least need to be on the level of the weak trio because of every arc from here on out will be insanely dangerous for her if she's not. Now, the last thing I want to explain with Vivi joining has to do with the Straw Hats. Why has Oda made it where the Straw Hats know nothing about what happened at the Reverie? Has anyone in Wano even heard about what happened? I wonder if the reason no one knows is because the newspapers for those topics weren't during the same timeline as post Wano. Now, I personally think that the Straw Hats simply won't learn about what happened at the Reverie by a newspaper, but will instead learn when they see either a revolutionary or Vivi for themselves. I believe this is why Oda hasn't allowed them to see what happened because it'll be a much better surprise for us the readers if Vivi is unexpectedly in Elbaf. I believe that after they meet her, she'll explain everything that happened and the Straw Hats will learn the truth at the same time as us the readers. We may have to wait a few more months to learn all the reveals of the Reverie, but as long as it's done right, I'm willing to wait. What do you guys think happened at the Reverie? Do you think Vivi escaped with Sabo? Do you think we'll get Vivi back in Elbaf? Let me know anything you feel down in the comments below. Also, please like the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, if you've enjoyed even one thing out of this video. Thanks a lot for watching and please remember to have a great day.